things right now. Is that heaven? Yes, it is. And it's available here and now. I said I was going to come at that several different ways. I want to make sure you get this today before you walk out of here. Amen? Amen. I want you to get this. Heaven's available right now, not just when you die. You know, you think about, think of all the ways that you think about heaven. Okay? Now, for many of us, we may not think about heaven until somebody we love dies. Fair enough? And when somebody we really love dies, heaven becomes really important to us. Now, admit it. Think about it. When somebody we love dies, we want to know. We want to be assured. We want to believe in our hearts and in our heads that our loved one is in the presence of God. We want to believe that our loved ones are whole and healed. Some of us have had loved ones that died after a long battle with cancer or other tragedies. Yes? And don't you want to believe that when they, when they pass, when they die from this world and go to the next, don't you want to believe that they're whole and they're healed? Yeah? Yes. You still with me? Are you paying attention? You with me? Yes. Okay, it's dialogue, not just monologue. All right? I hope, I hope that's what you're thinking about the person you love most in the world, and maybe they're still with you. So when you think about the person you love most in the world, this is what you want. You want the kingdom of heaven. Or maybe some other words to add to this. Kingdom of heaven, when we think about it, we say, well, what do we want? We, we, we want, we believe, we pray that it's going to be a place with no sadness or suffering or grief, where people are comforted, where they're cold, you know? There's no hunger, there's no... There's no uh, thirst, no war, no conflict. There's true shalom. That's what we believe. So again, I come back to this. Is this heaven? Yes. Heaven is all these things. And I don't want to wait for it. I want to experience it right now. And I invite you to consider that. Heaven is not a place. Now maybe this is rocking your boat a little bit. Maybe some of you have been raised in a tradition where heaven is a place. But I'm going to say this, heaven is not a place, it's a state. And it, the state is not Iowa, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Even though I'll say there's some, some mornings and some evenings, you know, most of my life, especially this time of year, you know it's hot out? There's times, it's what's up. I've always said it's my favorite time of the day when, when my daughter was a little girl. She'd say to me at different times when we'd be driving, and she'd say, Daddy, is this your favorite time of the day? And I'd say, well, almost. It's about 8.30, 9 o'clock on a summer's evening when you can drive, and I swear you can just, you can see the corn and the beans breathing, you know? Have kind of a mist in the air. Well, I look at that and say, ooh, I hope heaven does look like this because it's beautiful. But heaven isn't. It's not a state like Iowa. Heaven is a state of being. Heaven is a state of being alive. Again, look at the list. Heaven is a state of living with love. Heaven is a state of living in the sense that you're one with God, one heart, one love. Heaven is knowing that you belong to God and that God loves you no matter what. No matter how badly you messed up. No matter how badly you messed up last week. No matter how badly you yelled at somebody or were angry with somebody or did some kind of hidden sin, heaven is knowing that God still loves you. God hasn't stopped loving you. And you can be, you can be restored. All of those things. Heaven. State of living in the presence of God. This is what Jesus brought to earth, folks. You want to know about Jesus? You want to know about what Jesus did? You want to go beyond just the little baby or the man on the cross or the Easter morning Jesus? This is what Jesus brought to the earth to be experienced right now. You know, it's an interesting thing. You already do that. You pray that at least once a week. Once a week, most of you have memorized a prayer line, and we pray it together, and you mention how much you hope that, that heaven and earth will be connected. You say it when you say, Thy will be done, what? On earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. Heaven is being in the presence of God. And Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven is within you and among us. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is received and it's experienced and it's not complicated. In the gospel of Mark, Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven is, is experienced. The presence of God is experienced simply by accepting it and believing it like a little child. Hmm? Meaning no hang-ups, no reservations, no holding back, all in like any little kid is. All right? Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven, the presence of God, is experienced from spiritual rebirth. That's in the Gospel of John. Now, spiritual rebirth. It, obviously, we're not physically reborn. What Jesus is talking about 
It's a whole rebirth in our attitudes, in our actions. It's a rebirth in how we think about people. It's a rebirth. It's a starting over in, in how we see the world and how we see our money and how we see our jobs and how we see our decisions that we make. Spiritual rebirth is, a, is, is a being, being changed. It's being transformed to be more like Jesus. And Jesus said, that's how you experience the presence of God. You're reborn. You're changed. You're transformed. And Jesus also said in Matthew's Gospel, He said that the kingdom of heaven, the presence of God, is experienced when we do the will of God. I think that's important for us in this room because we're really good at wanting to do our will. Yes? Yes. We want to do what we want. We want to do what we want. I'll tell you something. The challenge for the church is, is the more people we add to the church, you understand, the more people we add to the church, the more people we have, they all want their will, not God's will. Yeah? And the more people we have coming in this building, coming into this hospital boat, that say, whoa, 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 I don't like it that way. That's why we seek the will of God. And not just our way. Okay? Now obviously we, you know, we lead, we have leaders in the church and we're trying to do things a certain way. Okay? But doing the will of God is important. Doing the will of God is what comes from reading scripture and getting together to study it and to pray and to worship together and, to, and to, to, to be open for God to lead and guide and direct you. We do the will of God because Jesus says, do this and you will experience the kingdom of heaven. There's three shorthand things that we remember for it. Jesus said, do, do, do the great requirement. Do you remember what this is? Do justice, love mercy, walk humbly with your God. The will of God is that. The will of God is that we all carry out the great, the great uh, commandment. Love God, love others. I right? serve the world. That's why we have the wall up here, prominent, every week. It's not, just, it's not just window dressing. It's not just something cool. It's the bricks help us know that to build our lives up, we have to love God, which is the white bricks, and love others, which is the red bricks, and serve the world's the green bricks. Okay? That's the will of God. It's the great commandment and it's the great commission. Go. Don't just sit in the boat. Jesus didn't call us to sit in the pews and sit in the chairs and talk about Him all the time. He, did, he said what? Go. Doing the will of God allows us to experience the presence of God. And again, I remind you that Jesus says, why wait? This isn't just something that's going to happen upon death. Jesus said, why wait? The kingdom of heaven has come to earth. Come to earth. But you see, one of the great misconceptions about the Christian faith is that it's all about ending up in the right place when you die. That that's it.